Blessings and welcome forward to Reasonings at the Tree of Life and we are at my home in Jamaica and it's a joy and a pleasure to have you here. Blessings to the presence of Brother Raman, Sister Lasana, his beautiful Empress and Artrice, my lovely princess and Zaire, my lovely son. Blessed balance in the energy and in the creative spirit and we give thanks that there's love, there's mercy and that there's kindness. Ah, it's such a joy to be in a space so comforting and where the presence of the ancestors and the Most High God and the angels can visit us. Our nature relieves our souls of so much stress if we just digress and let go and release into the smooth flowing of restoration. Today's offering is on the gift of prophecy because it's been on my soul since last year since we lost so much of our footage in that um, carnage of attacks and um, hacking but here we are that we've survived by the grace of God in season two and we are coming forward with an offering on the gift of prophecy with which the Most High had spoken to me to bring forward to your attention that there are people amongst us who are gifted with a forwarding understanding of our current experiences and where it will take us in years to come if we do take heeding to the words of these obedient functional souls, we will be spared some of the greatest wrath that the human family will experience in our times. Those who are gifted with this grand view of the work of the Most High God come to man in word form as prophecy, a revelation unto clairvoyant, clean heart, pure minds, pure hands of beings who are devoted. These revelations show our collective, our personal destinies. Let us be very thankful when we have been truly blessed to experience the knowledge, the information, the visions that are coming, that are coming forward from the Spirit of the Most High God as it's revealed unto these people, unto these vessels of life, unto these vessels of life who are upon the altar of divine transformation. In this age, there are many questions that are in the minds of people and these insecurities and uncertainties have drawn human minds closer to the age of prophecy, to the wording of prophecy, to find a rooting and a footing on which to stand upon in these ages, in these times. We have come to see that the revelation of prophecy has made comfort to many souls who are confused but yet somewhat at peace when the knowledge of prophecy has revealed how it is that we got to here and where it is that we will get from here. I know many people when they have these gifts they are afraid because of what they see they do not know and at some point they do not know how to authenticate. Only through your faith are you made whole. Hallelujah. So when the most High God has spoken to you suffer yourself to sound a little bit out or a little bit off to your friends, a little bit stupid, even a little bit mental for the highest good because the Lord hasn't given you a mind that is not sound and without clarity it's clairvoyance your mind is filled with the spirit and the presence of the Most High we don't have to be afraid of these things because the truth is even though people look upon you as if you have brought some great um, apostasy or some great apocalyptic or apocalypto viewpoint to them the truth is you have brought what the Lord has put on your heart I for one at some point when I think about the church structures I say to myself when I speak and I know my appearance I, I know judgments thereof but my mind has grown from the judgment to just understand that the Lord says Jerome if I tell you to say this and say it what's the issue all about and who you put your faith in is greater than the faith itself and it's greater than the manifestations hallelujah thereof you have to know God as God is and that faith is made whole so when the Lord has spoken things to you which he has told you is yet to come for a offering, for a warning unto many who would suffer had it not been for this knowledge, this information, this sense of clarity that is brought from the Most High, born in the experience of those he has called. If you are called to the ministry of prophecy, it's not about taking up an office in your local church or your local parish. I'm speaking clearly to the hearts of people who are not necessarily thinking that I'm promoting some kind of a special interest because the essence of it, I am promoting the Word of God as I have received it. And that's it. Now, I know that in itself, 
is a bravery of commitment to do that because it's hallelujah that's not easy even with me saying hallelujah I, I look at my my page and I see people commenting in such a radical term hallelujah is a term being used in Ethiopia long before the modern age so I mean people hallelujah the presence of the most high God reaches the soul stronger than most people can can imagine when I was talking about capacity in one of my videos before like the Lord, I likened him unto a 440 volt. Let me liken him unto a 440 million volt, right? And the human life form may be at a 220 uh, megahertz of, of energy. We are really not that strong and our frequencies are really not that eternal. The eternal in us is what gives us strength. Clean hands, pure heart, means that the soul's capacity to transmute the energy from the higher frequency, their energy is so intense one of the word sounds, hallelujah, of acclamation, of affirmation, is hallelujah. It's a praise, it means glory to God. So, um, sometimes my human self kicks in and I say, are some people for real? Do they pervert everything? Hallelujah means glory to God. Glory in the eyes, it's a praise, hallelujah. And it is to say, I suffer myself to be removed so the presence of the Most High can come forward. And for those who talk about my deeper voice, you have not heard me perform. I have a much deeper voice than the voice with which the Lord has blessed me to communicate with you. You need to catch some of my performances. I am a very high decibel, hallelujah, voice. And I have a very deep masculine tone. Believe me, when I chant, you'll hear it. So when I say hallelujah, and the deeper tones in me come out. Accusations. Anyhow, the gift of prophecy, having the strength with which to present that which the Lord has placed upon your heart, bearing yourself the suffrage and the opinions of men, women, and child to present the word of the Lord, i.e. through prophetic statement, prophetic words, presentations of actualization that will take place in future points along our spectrum of human existence. The gift of prophecy paints a future scape of our destinies, the road, the paths we take to our fulfillment, to the end of days, to the fulfillment in the end of ways. Be not afraid prophetic man, prophetic woman, prophetic child. There is not a special golden seal that is controlled by man upon the order of prophecy. Men design these to self-promote. The gift of hallelujah, the gift of prophecy is the gift of God. God doesn't speak in prophetic words. The words of God being eternal is received by transient metamorphic man as prophecy. That which is constant being received in momentary manifestations in the transient. The eternal having a place amongst the transient. The temporal. We cannot hold this forever. Neither can we hold the picture of its completeness in us forever. Forever being a word suggesting more than we could ever imagine. Hence, like an unto prophecy, forever is in the hallelujah, is in the domain of the Most High God. But in the glimpses of the constancy of the eternal, received unto us, presented unto our fellow humans as prophecy. A painting that will show a future event, a fulfillment, a manifestation, a tajmel of great glory and glorifying edicts fulfilled. When discipline, designed, devotion becomes the decipher we actualize this inborn knowing. From that knowing is that speaking, that offering, 
drinking from a wellspring like unto the piercing of Christ's side where pure water flows. From the purest water, the purest soul is the gift of prophecy revealed. Open up your mouth, your chakras of clarity and truth. Truth bearers, visionaries, prophets of the now age, speak clearly. The fulfillment of the great Jeremiah's of the times that has been has come to fulfillment. The great angel Uriel has spoken greatly over the lives of human, reading from the eternal edicts of divine. The Most High God is eternal. Our reception of eternal things and their pronouncement amongst those who are sleeping in human form unto us as prophecy, a word in suggestion to mean the speaking of the direct word, hallelujah, of the Most High God unto his people who might be generations removed from its complete manifestation and its complete fulfillment. This moment is a fulfillment in the presence of the Most High God, one of which I have seen many moons ago, hallelujah. And here it is now in my own prophetic experience, I have seen my own future and here it is now that it is present and I am most thankful. For those of you who are seeing our collective destinies, help us to get past our fears in apocalyptics, get past our fears in a matrix of conditioning so we can truly be, alas, aligned to purpose, divine destiny. It's not a mastery of lingual language or tongue. It's an awareness, a willingness to completely be imbued into the obedient spirit of the Most High God. If we with just that simpleness of our souls just continue in the function with which the Most High has blessed us, has presented us, then we will understand the nature of what we are doing. We will perceive the nature of what we are truly offering and what we are truly in presence of. In the presence of the Most High God and Father, we are made whole. There are no distractions when one can act upon the word as it comes to us, truly as it is presented to us. The gift of prophecy has shown me many, many years ago a changing of Jamaica's landscape and shoreline. And I was afraid to tell people because I said, wow, people are going to label me a prophet or this. But the truth is I see a reconfiguration of how Kingston looks, you know, in a time, hallelujah, in a time to come. And it's always been something that, you know, I have felt that people should be aware of how they build into the, the waterfronts and certain areas within the city and should be much more tending to just have the businesses in the city and to live more on the mountains because, you know, there's a, a change coming, hallelujah, for our shorelines of Jamaica. And as, you know, time brings these words closer, I've always been, you know, contemplating how to present them. So, as I say, I'm no prophet, but um, I have seen where it's necessary to present the word. And I know those who have seen these events even more clearly are usually very afraid. I, through the gift of the Most High God, through Sila Media, we have a platform and as such we can present. And we are not afraid to have others come and share their knowledge of prophecy with us. So we're not just this one-sided presentation, we are willing. You know, so as we relate to our own experiences in Jamaica, our own culture, you know, my heart goes out to coastal people and to those who live in the coastal regions to be very, to be very careful where you build. And, um, you know, if your businesses are in the coastal areas, well, okay, but be careful to, you know, have a little bit more of a mountain overlooking, you know, because our coastal heritage will change in times to come. So I say for those of you who are seeing time yet ahead of our own lives. Be not afraid to speak the knowledge, the knowing thereof, so that people can understand, so that people can feel, so people can piece together the little modicums of knowledge they got through their own visions and their own dreams. The most I communicating pieces of the puzzle. For those of you who can see it more clearly, a more vast and myriad vision of our collective destinies, through the gift of prophecy, 
share it with us. Don't leave us to wander in the quandary of self-contemplation. If the Most High have shared divine words with you, if the Most High have shared prophetic words with you, exercise your gift of prophecy. Take the providence of this gift and present your knowledge, present your information. There's always a listening ear what that is in need of that information. There's always a listening ear that is in direct need for that food of the soul. So those of you who find yourself truly gifted with the understanding of the presence of the Most High speaking to you, showing you things of our collective destiny, speak them unto us. We need to know. Hallelujah! We need this information. Each one, teach one, each one, reach one. It's a sharing. It's a caring. It's a linking. It's a living cosmos. The trees, the creatures, the wind, the blossoms, the hummingbirds, the bees that does the pollination, the humans who eat the fruits thereof, we who tend to the land. It's a harmonization. If you have seen ahead of the moment, that can, sh that can save us, that can share with us a little bit of clarity that we can use to be of benefit to all of us. Share that with us by all means. Do not misuse the gift of prophecy. I often speak in certain terms and sometimes I guess some of my friends they say, well you've left out some of the other veins of information that you used to share with us and I've gotten so religious. Don't misuse the gift of prophecy. You see, futurism, the futuristic mind, there's something about it that is unique and special. I know it, and you know it. Those of you who are that, you are seeing things that are yet not. You are capitalizing through products and services. Touche. I give it to you. You're doing something. But is it just a narrow-minded view of reality that you are exposing and espousing to your brilliance in your futurism? You're seeing far ahead. You are controlling the narrative to us. You're giving us a version of reality, sometimes an aversion to reality. And you've got the eyes. We know you've got the eyes because alas, look at how now our present has become the futurist visions of those who were 70 years before us, 120, yeah, 500 years, 1,000 years. How have they fashioned through these gifts that they have of the future? They don't call it prophecy. The providence thereof is products and services, maybe philosophies, maybe some controlling forms of psychology, Maybe some kind of social philosophy of functionality in future societies, i.e. the complete <laughs> so-called democratization of information. A society of high-speed trading, high-speed information, informatics, i.e. an entrance into the Aquarian age. Futurists so-called visionaries just squeezing from the divine just enough to make themselves wealthy and praiseworthy amongst men, women and children for achievements. Use that knowledge of the sight you have to shape up well. Let me come off of the nice terminology and give it to you raw. I always say, for you brilliant minds, you design these great programs. How come you're not designing programs to help us with the kind of destructions we do within our ecology? Why aren't there forms of thinking that you design to repair ecology, ecological damage? Why is the synthetic nature of things continuing? You're a visionary. You know what the future will bring because of these things. But you're only thinking in terms of the opportunity for you to create a polymer to digest the polymers in petroleum. That's all your brilliance is being used at. Your functionality just for profit. Your functionality just being used for profit. 
You can create through your visionary mindset a future plan to truly re-engineer our failing societies because you will see the end result of your activities before you've even started. You know it. You saw the end product before you designed it. You know, I know, that you saw 10 million people purchase that product and you felt comforted because you know of its end. Use that knowledge. My brother, my sister, use that knowledge to help us. There are pollutants running a rampant and a muck upon the planet. You have keys, you have coordinates to our future arrival. Use that future knowledge to combat present day problems. Don't just make a profit. Profits, you get it? You get it? Profits don't just make a profit. Make something of it. I'm serious, make something of it. Use this gift of prophecy, of this futurism that you can see us further on so you can secure for your generation, for your family, the wealth of this earth and its resources for another 500 or 10,000 years. To what benefit? To all of us living in gas masks and cannot walk in a society, all of us living in these robotic machines, these semi-automatic DNA driven machines, I've seen it too. Not only you, I've seen it too. I'm trying to get people to understand we don't have to just make our world become our worst nightmare. You have seen better. You know better. The word says there's the end of all of this suffering. And all these weapons will be converted to pruning hooks and shears. That means, my brother, that means, my sister, how we have gone away from nature to destroy the planet. How we have dug up paradise and put up a parking lot will come back to haunt us greatly. And it's time we realize the detriment of our actions. Many of us are seeing it and many of those who are seeing it so clearly are capitalizing on our vulnerabilities because they know in the future where our thoughts are going. They see they're seeing it play out each day as our reality. And they're making holy profit from the wager of which societies go under and which societies rise. These high stake thinkers are throwing us off. They are confusing us. They are using us. And some are downright abusing us. True visionaries, those who are using the gift of the prophecy to see the end of ages, to see beyond the wars, paint pictures, paint murals, write books, tell stories of this glorious vision of the worlds that are yet to come. So our children and us, the children of the Most High, we do not lose hope in our present reality and in the presence of reality. Blessings and thank you very much for sharing this moment as I try to speak a word unto your souls for those who are gifted in the prophetic, who are not just staying hidden, but are being revealed without fear, without favor, and speaking in the moment, fulfilling the functions of the divine law. So we give thanks that you've come to share this moment with us. Remember that your awesome gift and blessing unto yourself, unto your environment, those who share with you, and for those who actually are a part of the environment, Remember that you have an impact on their experience, striving towards all of the clearest, most clairvoyant thoughts in good activities. Blessings. Until next time, we meet again.